Welcome back to another episode of the Grow Your Occupancy podcast. I'm Julie Podowitz, CEO and founder. And today I welcome back the amazing, amazing Grow, some of the amazing Grow sales specialist team. Last podcast, they gave great advice. They were talking about some gaps that they're seeing in databases as they sit in the seat of a sales director at a community, either if the seat's open or if the community needs that extra boost or has one of those behemoth databases that's heavy in the quote unquote cold leads, and which is an area not very many people like to uh, dig into. So welcome back, everybody. I'm going to start at, uh, with each one of you. What piece of advice would you give a community relations director, sales director, who is doing the job you do at the community? Well, I'll start by saying that um, I believe I've learned to really listen with my heart to try and connect with what maybe what their main pain point is, um, what's causing, if it's a family member, what's causing them the most angst um, when they go home after visiting their parent. Um, so I'm actively listening. And then um, when I speak to them, I'm speaking from my heart, like um, how I would want someone to speak with me if it were my mother or my father um, or even myself in that instance. Um, and that helps me to connect. I think they feel the authenticity in that. Um, I learned early on that this is not typical sales, um, that it's a highly emotional um, situation and sometimes frightening. Um, so I try to take that, that sincerity, um, that connection, that heart, and blend it with um, a lot of the techniques, the tools that you've given us. Um, to help move them forward. We do this every day. This may be the only time in their lives they'll do this and they're um, confused and frightened. So they need an expert that can take them by the hand and say, you know, with what you've told me, I think this would be the next step for us. Yeah, it's tough to give advice if you haven't listened to someone's story. Right. Great advice, Donna. I could piggyback off that. Um, so definitely listening to understand, like Donna said, um, I think that we talk a lot about conversions and moving through the next step. And sometimes we get stuck in the call because we can't go forward. So when we get stuck, let's maximize that call and go deeper. If we can't move forward, go deeper, because I think discovery is the most important part of the sales process. So going deeper um, and asking, you know, tell me more about that, paint a picture. And really that will help us to understand more, make sure we document and um, then set the next step. But if we can't move forward, let's maximize that call and not just dismiss it, go deeper uh, with that call. So. Ooh, so while I have you on the call mm -hmm. and then ask a question to learn more. Absolutely. Every call, you can add more discovery. And we want to set ourselves up to be a resource. Uh, by the time we hang up the phone we and setting the next step, that might be our next step. I'm going to follow up with you on Thursday and send you the information we discussed. We want them to think of us as an advisor and we want to be a resource. So the more we know about them, the more capable we would be in that. So have you... Uh, have you heard it or seen in the training about the iceberg? But what you what we see of an iceberg is only the literal tip of the iceberg. And if you look under the water, it's the majority of the iceberg. And what you just said, Lori, and I wrote this down, I'm such a visual person that in, if you can't go forward, go deeper, I picture that iceberg. Yes. If, you know, so often... We don't want to be salesy, but we are salesy because we're not going deeper. We're doing, we're staying linear. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that reminder. Don? 
Yeah, I think it's important in this too to remember when we are digging in, a lot of times we are talking to that person that may not financially qualify. Do I just want to jump off that call and move on to my next lead um, because this isn't going to help this community? No. Um, I can tell you every time I've had one of these instances come up, I've been able to put them in touch with contacts I have to find them that community that will work financially um, to help them with aid and attendance to go over long-term care policies. So don't just dismiss these people because they can't afford us. Please go out of your way to know your communities, to know where you can forward this information to get them somewhere. It would break my heart to think, you know, how many people go hang up that phone with them and then that senior is left struggling with, where do I go from here? So mm -hmm. to me, like Lori and Donna have commented on, we are here to advise. We are here to dig deep. We are here to get those answers. So please don't pass them off. You have no idea how many times I've had those people refer back to me to say, this person helped me. I know they can help you. Um, and I still get calls today and, and I'm not in communities because of that. So that is something to keep in mind. Just know your community, know what you can offer and, and really grasp the idea that senior living is huge. There's so many areas of opportunity for us. Be a resource. Mm -hmm. I would say, and shifting gears a little bit, one of my pieces of advice, and we all know how passionate I am about follow-up, that it's, it's my jam, it's what I love to do. But email nurturing campaigns are really, really a false sense of security. Oh, I'm I'm following up with that lead. Sure, sure. They're looking, they're getting emails, they're getting emails, but why aren't we picking up the phone? If you're allergic to the phone, this may not be the right field for you. We do the vast majority of what we do either face to face or over the phone. Mm -hmm. And while we could have a preferred method of communication, we've all gotten tours and move-ins from a text message. But truly what's going to move that forward is voice to voice or face to face. And so don't just rely on the fact that you're sending emails every single month. Oh yeah, they're reading them or, oh yeah, I, I've heard from them. If they're not responding to you, then they're, they may not be getting it. Mm -hmm. So don't rely so heavily on email nurturing campaigns to do the actual lead nurturing for you because that's not it. Email nurturing campaigns or false sense of security. Interesting. I wrote that one down too, Dresden. Mm -hmm. I All of us think... could, on this panel could sit and talk about our time management. And I know that's the most successful piece, I think, for anybody is to please master time management and guard your time. I know we all have what we do every day, but when you're in these communities and you have outreach and you have events going on, guard that time. If you aren't taking those two, three hours a day or a week to make your calls, you're losing those leads to your competitor. So like I said, guard your time, power hour on your door, whatever you need to do, bring it up in your standups, but Amen. make sure you are allocating the time you need to make these calls. That should be first and foremost. And I absolutely agree with that. And I think that for a newer sales director or even somebody who's uncomfortable making the calls, and I do have to agree, we see this in the databases that we are in, that there's just so much activity in email that they haven't made calls as much as, I mean, maybe not even every six months to people that are categorized as warm or maybe even hot. And it's amazing that they might be uncomfortable making calls to someone who requested information. And everyone in our database has requested information. And I think that that's something maybe just to remember is you should never feel uncomfortable calling any of these individuals because they've requested information from you you can always state a, a statement of fact when you call, just reminding them that, you know, you're calling from that community and you've requested information from us and following up from you. You know, that I think is just such a, it's a warm, it's a warm call. 
It's that statement of fact, Melinda. I understand that you are seeking information about our community. It's yes. truth. It's truth. And, and I know, also, I'm sorry, Melinda, go ahead. No, and, I, and I go back to also um, having more information on that individual than just that email contact or just that phone number the discovery so that you can do a home visit. You can send something to them mm -hmm. so that you ask all of that information when you have them either on a tour or on the phone, ask for contact information, um, ask for an influencer so that you can call the daughter-in-law or have that information if she's on a tour. It, it's just drilling down, it's the iceberg, right? It's going deeper and, um, it's really important. I think you'll, I think people will find more information. Um, we'll find it will be much more valuable. I was just going to add um, when it comes to the emails, I see a lot of um, what I'll call email templates sent. Um, so again, you want to personalize that email, um, you know, make a couple points in there, uh, brief, but a couple quick points um, that relate to them specifically. I have even seen, um, and I know um, why it's being done, but I've even seen sales directors that maybe the um, referral that they got says would like to set an, a, a tour appointment. And instead of a call being made to confirm that that date works, there goes that email template. Can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, so we have to really read the referral that comes into us, read the information that we receive, and then personalize each email. It's okay to maybe start with a template, but you got to tweak it to make it fit the individual. Yeah, there's that email given to false sense of security. Well, I sent an email to confirm the tour. Yeah. Or I sent a text. Text, email, uh, also video messaging. Mm -hmm. There's great video messaging platforms that many use and if you don't use one perhaps consider using one or what hold your phone in front of you and, and hit record there's so many statistics around open rates of messages that include video versus lots of text who reads emails with loads and loads of texts unless they come from someone that you know that you really need to read it. And if it's a solicitor, I don't know. I don't read them. If there's a video, I might listen or watch it, see what they have to say. Any other advice? Pick up the phone. Somebody's, uh, sorry, Pick up Dresden. The phone. Pick up the phone. Mine was short. Pick up the phone. <laughs> Pick up the phone. Yeah, I think uh, the video options are great, Julie. I know um, in the past when we have had residents that have been fearful or think, you know, like a lot of them do, that these are skilled nursing communities because that's what they have ingrained in them. I would go around and have our ambassadors, resident ambassadors, send them a nice little message saying, here I am, I love it, this is why. You have no idea how that breaks the ice for somebody um, and just really gives them that sense of, community, which is what they're looking for. So the video messaging is an amazing technique to use. I, I believe and agree with Julie on that 100%. Yeah, the resident testimonials, it lets them see that someone like them is there and happy and why. Highly impactful, highly impactful. Mm -hmm. I was gonna ask you guys, similar to advice, which is all so valuable, and I did want to make a comment. It's all simple, not easy, but it nothing I heard was out of the ordinary, with all due respect. And it's it, but you're bringing it back to the job, and the job is get, getting to know your customers and providing advice in a really highly sensitive, emotional atmosphere. And I wanted to go back to something, Dawn, you mentioned time management. And one of my questions, and to give some context to the question for those listening, our virtual sales specialists work two hours a day minimum in a database. That's typical. There are contracts of three hours a day or four hours a day in some cases. 
but two hours a day, consistent. Two hours a day, 10 hours a week, maybe 12 hours a week. You all get an amazing amount done. And again, with all due respect, we know there's always a whirlwind, but we, so oftentimes it's even more activity than the person who's on site full time in two hours. How do you get so much done? You can start that. Um, you know, we want to average eight to 10 calls an hour. That's an average. You can sit, I will literally time myself in certain databases and some are friendlier than others at letting you input information, but you can average five to six minutes inputting your information, calling, leaving the message, doing a follow-up. And I like to layer mine like Melinda and everybody has said, so I may call and send that email immediately. So it's literally watching that. And if you're tracking your your calls on a daily basis, you can start seeing, you know, especially being in a community where that lag comes in. Oh, so-and-so came in my office and then there went my day. But that's why we say guard your time, but have an idea of how many calls you should be making. You should know what your benchmarks are at each community every month. Take that, divide that by your month and see how many calls you need to do a day. If you want to be that critical thinking in, in this method, which in as we see in all the you know CRMs we're working, those aren't being done. So it's best, you know, like I said, guard your time, know what your benchmarks are, and try to set a precedence every day to get those total no amount of calls done. Dresden and I are working training a sales director now, and I know that was one of the things that you know she set guidance for her for next week. You need to do 16 calls a day in order to get these move-ins that we need and get traffic to the building. So set um, your benchmarks, let them know what your expectations are. I can't tell you how many salespeople will say, I have no idea what, what my benchmarks are. So, um, you know, that has to come from the top down. So those are those are some things that, you know, I know that work for us. There is a simple equation. You know, everybody wants the quick fix. How do I get there? How do I do this faster? What's your tip? What are your tips and tricks? The, it's very simple. Calls go up, tours go up, tours go up, move-ins go up. Calls go down, tours go down, tours go down, move-ins go down. It is very, very simple. And so many people don't recognize that. I can tell you a successful story in supporting a community in the wild, wild west. And we were mid 70%. There was no sales director with the support of the executive director and making hundreds of phone calls and deep diving into that database, we increased it to over 90% in less than 90 days. That was a direct reflection of picking up the phone and connecting with people very consistently. If I didn't get them on the phone, it was, I'll, I'll call them next week. I'll call them next week. I'll call them next week. Polite persistence but trying to get somebody on the phone, very easy equation. I can add that many times or almost every time I've walked into a community that had occupancy challenges, when you immediately look at the leads coming in, whether it doesn't matter what kind of lead volume, but if you take a look at the leads, almost always the leads aren't being contacted timely hospitality wins, um, and then they're not being followed up with. You can go straight to that first part of the sales process to start fixing the problem. Um, that's that's just the, the simple process isn't being worked in my experience. So you're getting a lot done because you are picking up the phone, you're setting goals, you're setting expectation. If it doesn't come from the top, it comes from you. And, and I would say that to all of us, well, no one told me. I wasn't trained on how to pull that report. You know, as a professional, seriously, you know, that that's showing up as a victim. That's another podcast for another time. And I'm, you know, I point it to myself too. Julie, you're showing up as a victim today or in this moment. And it's tougher to see it in yourself, but don't feel sorry for yourself, right? And setting and, and it sounds Lori adhering to what know what you're supposed to do and adhering to it 
you know, that this is, this is all great. Uh, it's not anything that is made up or new tips and tricks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who else? Uh, advice, advice, or how do you get so much done? Melinda, how do you get so much done? Well, I do think that, like Dawn said, you just keep making the calls. Um, there are days that I don't reach anyone. And there, I mean, you just feel like one, like, oh my gosh, nobody wants to talk to me. And all I'm going to do is dial again and dial again. And, and it feels, um, it does kind of feel like defeating in a way. It's a psyche thing. But then it's very interesting because you start to get back the message from the communities that we work with that people are calling in. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's a celebration. You know, yeah. they're, they're calling in, they're, they're scheduling tours, um, they're asking for information or, you know, cause they're calling for Melinda and, you know, so you know it's us or they're asking, the community's asking for this person that they don't know. They're calling from Washington and here's the number. And, you know, it's somebody I've reached out to. So it does work. Keep reaching out to these individuals who have asked for information. And it's all about um, consistency. It really is, whether they're picking up the phone or not. That's my biggest thing is, and, and it is getting, it, it, it takes time management and it takes persistency. And I don't think it's the corporate goals. It's your individual goal. It's setting your own goal mm -hmm. and doing I, it. I think that Melinda brings up a really good point is that we're not following up with people who didn't, it, that it, we just picked from thin air, right? And my team, anybody that's ever worked with me in the industry knows that I say, gee, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, gee, today's going to be a great day to look at senior living. They don't do that. There's something, there's a catalyst there. And it is our jobs to figure out what it was. They're not just going to kick the tires today. There is a reason that they picked up the phone. There's a reason they inquired. So it is our jobs to dig deeper, go below that iceberg surface mm -hmm. and say, how, you know, what is it that caused you to reach out to me today? There's a reason the sales funnel, and if you go on our website, you'll see a funnel. And if you've been to any of our training and maybe y'all use a funnel, those of you listening, there's a reason that the funnel is shaped a bit, a bit like an iceberg. When someone inquires, they can be at, they could be at the top of that funnel. They call for a reason. It does not mean they're down here, they're here. Lori, back to your point earlier, I think in the first podcast, you can't stay linear. You're gonna be, you're gonna stay at the top of the funnel because a lot of people will inquire at the, you know, the top two kind of, and it's up to us to help them get down to that, the narrow, we really wanna widen that funnel, but that, that move in, right? Because they call, there is a need, does not mean, this would be my piece of advice, it doesn't mean that they're at the bottom of the funnel. They're, even though it may sound to you, oh my gosh, they should have called me three years ago. Okay, your opinion means very little here. It's their story and their journey. And just because you think they should be at the bottom of the funnel, which maybe, you know, I don't like to use that, the yes word, they're at the top of the funnel right? Or they're at the second tier, right? So that, that the consistency, making the calls, I love Dresden, I love your uh, equation so much, I put it in playbooks and put it in the grow training. And it's that plus your skill, plus your listening, all the things that you all do so well. Uh, my advice would be to practice those skills. And it does take practice. It does. Real quick, as we're finishing up, part two. And I want to thank you all so much for all of your expertise and also for just being amazing people and loving what you do. Cause it's not easy. He was like, well, you're at home or you're not in a community. You're not getting interrupted. You, you know, you get interrupted at home too, <laughs> or, you know, a, a leaf blowing in the window can interrupt us if we allow it to Right? anyone who has a life can get interrupted. So it does take discipline, no matter where you are, we do recognize the community, you got to shut the door, right? So real quick, uh, your, your, uh, share a, a win, share a, just an example of this and a, a win or a whoop, that you've experienced recently. And Lori, let's start with you. 
Well, I just had one last week that I shared in our internal Slack uh, group, which by the way, I think everyone should have that so that we share wins with each other. Um, I had called a, a March 22 lead um, and I did reach the senior and uh, she said, I'm still in the independent community, but my sons are serious now and ready to do something. And she gave me both of their numbers. I have reached out to them um, and we have a tour schedule. So again, just knowing that that lead came in March of 22 and it was never worked. Um, and I just happened to come across it as I'm going through the uh, existing database that I'm working. And uh, there, that's just another example of how you can never assume. And she did say to me, uh, she said something about how uh, I just really brightened up her day for calling. And that was the part that melted my heart. And that's the reason I think we're all in this industry. No doubt. To be able to be involved. In context, for those who are listening, it's about a year and a half. Yes. So if someone was in the database, never been contacted in a year and a half. Awesome. Melinda, what about you? I had a family that I couldn't reach the primary contact, the prospect. And I decided after reading the notes to reach out to another family member. And I picked a daughter-in-law of two other contacts that were listed. I picked the daughter-in-law and I left the message saying that I couldn't meet, uh, couldn't reach Colleen, but I would, you know, introduced who I was. And then I sent an email and lo and behold, Anne reached out to me. We played phone tag. She was diligent. She really, really wanted to reach me. And they are really interested in moving the mother-in-law in. And they were so excited to be recontacted. And they said she had been, again, the funnel is not a straight line. She had been interested. They had toured, then wanted to stay home. And, you know, after the most recent kind of health setback that was not a real big crisis, she is um, really needing to make this decision. And they're not local. So we're really working again with this community to try to find ways and bring her in as a social tour. And the family is going to make all the financial decisions for mom. I mean, this is just a win. A um, huge win. Mm -hmm. Gotta celebrate. And I agree with you, Lori. If you don't celebrate wins, please think about doing that in any way that doesn't interrupt people's day-to-day -day life. But we celebrate every tour. We celebrate. I asked RVSS to, to celebrate one thing. He didn't schedule a tour today. What was your win? You gotta stay focused on what you won today, even on those days when you get 20 voicemail. All right, couple, couple uh, more shares for wins. I will say one of the, sorry, Don. I will say one of no. the biggest wins that I've had to date with Grow is tackling a monster of a database of nearly 40 or excuse me, 4,000 leads. Oh my goodness. Many of which had never been contacted dating all the way back to 1999. Ooh, so yeah. that's a big, big <laughs> deal. And getting it whittled down to 1,800 leads was a huge lead and not, that's not everybody's favorite task to do. I personally am weird and I love it, but that is, that is one of the things that even though it was a lot of less me left messages, it was a lot of losing leads or lost leads. Mm -hmm. It was still moving the needle for the sales team at the community because that is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Having that many leads and wondering how in the world am I going to have the time to do that? I would love it if somebody came in and said, hey, I'm going to take everything from 20 years ago and I'm going to go ahead and clean that up for you. It, it, it feels great. It's a lot of left messages, but I knew that I was chipping away at this iceberg, making it a little less, you know, Titanic. <laughs> great win. And Dawn, what about you? Oh, I think last month I had called a, can you hear me? No, now we can, yeah. I, I had called a lead last month. And of course, as soon as she answers, I'm calling about her husband. He had passed away. So then there's always that awkward moment of offering a condolence, um, asking how she was. But it was that question that triggered what happened because she said, I'm not doing well, Don. So she wasn't getting out of her pajamas. She was staying inside with her dog all day. 
I said, instead of, you know, let's take a step back and, and examine this. I said, have you looked into these communities at all? And she said, I didn't think I needed it. And we went over the whole socialization, which is what she was lacking. And believe it or not, she went and toured and she's living there now. So that was a huge win. Um, and I can't tell you the tears her and I experienced because she was calling me for follow-ups and we were talking, but it's just going that extra step. So might've been about her husband initially, but she was definitely in need of a community that could love her and give her back what she was missing. Donna. Um, I, well, like you mentioned, those behemoth um, databases, and, and um, I seem to kind of specialize in those at this point, and I was working one recently, and um, oftentimes they want you to start with the oldest inquiry, um, mm -hmm. and so I was calling through, and I saw one that actually the note said, um, mm -hmm. you know, prospect said she would probably move to Oregon, closing lead, but they didn't close it. Um, and I thought, well, I'm going to call and see did, how did that go? Is she enjoying Oregon? Well, guess what? Um, her, her answer was, you know, the wildfires have scared me. And, you know, I think it's a sign that you called and she has a lunch tour scheduled this week. Yes. So, um, you just never know. You just, you know, who would have thought that wildfires out west would have totally changed someone's plans on a lead that they meant to close? I want to thank you all again so much for two parts of amazing content and advice and kind of reminding us of what we really need to be doing to support more of our older adults and their families live in your wonderful, wonderful communities. If you would like to have the support of one of these or equally uh, talented other grow sales specialists, please reach out. Again, you can find us at on our website or you can email Julie at grow your occupancy or success at grow your .com. You can please like, subscribe and uh, rate five stars so other people find us and learn and benefit from the awesome content that you all provided in the last couple podcasts. Thank you all again so much. I appreciate you, you. And I'm very honored and grateful that you're all on the GROW team.